Now here comes one of our trickiest but most important modules. We're going to talk about some different kinds of implicatures. Um, so an implicature is anything that we express without literally saying it, right? Um, in Grice's, when Grice originally introduced this term, he used it to mean any kind of extra meaning that goes beyond what is said. Um, but actually there are many different kinds of this extra meaning. And there are many different ways that we can implicate something extra. So we need some way to um, categorize what these different kinds of extra meaning are. And we need some kinds of tests we can use to tell the difference between them. So first I will share with you a few examples of utterances that have an extra meaning, right? Of what is meant. And then we will look at what those extra meanings are and how they're different and how we can tell them apart. Um, so let's look at uh, each of these utterances. Like first, if someone says, these cookies are English, but they taste good. Um, literally, that just means two things, right? Number one, the cookies are English. Number two, the cookies taste good. But it also means a little bit, uh, it has a little bit of an extra meaning because there's the word but in there, right? Usually this but that means this and that are kind of in conflict. They don't normally go together. So in this case, the extra meaning of the sentence is English food doesn't normally taste good, right? The fact that these cookies are English and the fact that these cookies taste good is kind of in conflict. You wouldn't expect those to happen together. In other words, English food is usually bad. Um, this meaning is what's called a conventional implicature. And a little bit later, we'll, we'll talk about what that is and how that's different from the others. Now let's look at the second sentence. If we have an utterance like, uh, Sammy and Chris fell in love and got married. Um, again, literally this just means those two things. They fell in love and uh, they got married. But it also has an additional interpretation, uh, which could mean they fell in love first and they got married second. So they did things in that order. Uh, this is what's called a conversational implicature. And more specifically, it's called a generalized conversational implicature. Again, in just a moment, I will introduce, I will explain sort of what these terms mean and how they're different from conventional implicatures. And the last example is from our previous module. Remember, we saw this scene from Breaking Bad where a couple is looking at a house and the man is, uh, wants a much fancier house than they can afford. And the woman says, did you win the lottery and not tell me? Um, so here, this has uh, an extra little bit of meaning, which is that we don't have enough money for what you're asking for. And that's what's called a particularized conversational implicature. Right? So if you look at these, you can see there's two different distinctions that we're dealing with. There's conversational implicatures versus conventional implicatures. And within those two, there are generalized and particularized conversational implicatures. Um, so a conventional implicature is an extra meaning that comes about just because it just happens to be associated with certain words or certain sentence structures. So in this example, it's the word but, right? It just happens that whenever we use the word but, we, we, get, this, um, we, get, we get this extra little bit of meaning from it. Conversational implicatures are what comes from the cooperative principle that we talked about in the last two modules. So remember, the idea of those modules was that when we have a conversation, we assume that people are following the conversation, uh, we assume people are following the cooperative principle, we assume they're cooperating, we assume that they're saying things that are relevant. And so we listen to what they say, and then we reinterpret it based on that assumption, and based on what we know about um, what that person might believe and what that person might want. So technically, implicatures um, based on this cooperative principle that we've been talking about for the past two modules, are conversational implicatures, and that's separate from conventional implicatures. Um, and the last distinction we have is between generalized and particularized. The claim here is that generalized conversational implicatures happen regardless of the context. They just happen in general. Right? So anytime you say this happened and that happened, we will infer that it means they happened in a certain order. It doesn't need a special context for it whereas particularized conversational implicatures depend on a certain context, right? So these are the, the distinctions that we are working with. Um, 
so far it might sound kind of abstract and might sound kind of subjective. So let's look at a few of the features we can look at to tell what the difference between these are and to tell um, what kind of implicature we're dealing with, right? If you, if you hear an utterance or you see an utterance and you wanna know what kind of meaning you are working with, uh, you wanna have some way to know, is this the literal meaning of the sentence or is it a conventional implicature or is it a conversational implicature or what? Um, so we'll start from the, the top of it, right? So first off, how do we tell the difference between generalized and particularized conversational implicatures? Like I mentioned, this is um, the definition of, of this concept is that um, they, they differ in terms of what kind of context they need. So a particularized conversational implicature is based on a certain context, right? The example we saw about, um, did you win the lottery and not tell me? You would only interpret that utterance in the way that I told you if you had that context, right? If you had seen that video clip or you knew the situation that this couple was looking at the house and the man kept wanting bigger and fancier stuff that they couldn't afford, right? So if you took that same sentence and put it into some other context, it might not have that implicature, right? It might not have that extra meaning. Um, that's a particularized conversational implicature, right? It's based on a particular context. Generalized conversational implicatures supposedly happen in general, right? You don't need any special context, but they happen by default, like as long as you don't have a special context that cancels them, right? So they normally happen. Um, that's the claim for this distinction. The next distinction we wanna look at is what's the difference between conversational and conventional implicatures, right? So remember I said earlier, the definition of these is that conversational implicatures are based on the cooperative principle. They're based on reasoning about what a person might mean, but conventional implicatures are not. They're just conventions, right? It just happens that within a language community, we just all agree that when you use the word but, you mean there's a contrast between those things, right? Um, there are a lot of sort of tests that have been proposed to tell the difference between these. The one that I find the most useful is cancelability. Um, so the idea is that a conversational implicature can be canceled, right? If you make an utterance that has a conversational implicature, you can add something that cancels that implicature. Uh, and that's not possible for conventional implicatures. So for a conversational implicature, we can say something like, um, Sammy and Chris fell in love and got married and the conversational implicature is that they did it in that order. But I can then say, but not in that order, right? So Sammy and Chris fell in love and got married, but not in that order. Um, if I say a sentence like that, it, it sounds normal, right? It doesn't sound weird. It doesn't sound infelicitous. It doesn't sound like bad English. Uh, it just sounds like I, I added some clarification. So there's no difficulty to canceling a conversational implicature, but conventional implicatures are not easy to cancel. So for example, um, let's look back at the conventional implicature we saw before. These cookies are English, but they're good, right? So that implies that there's a contrast between English and good, right? It implies that English food is normally bad. Uh, if I try to cancel that implicature, I end up with a sentence that sounds really weird. If I try to say something like, these cookies are English, but they're good, but I'm not trying to say English stuff is normally bad. I'm not trying to make a contrast between those. Uh, it's it sounds quite weird, it sounds quite wordy. It, it basically sounds like a contradiction or at least it sounds like saying these cookies are English but they're good didn't really make sense or it wasn't appropriate to say in that context. Um, so this is one of the ways we can tell the difference between conversational and conventional implicatures, that conversational implicatures are easy to cancel and conventional implicatures are not. Um, now, the last distinction we have to consider is the difference between conventional implicatures and just literal meaning, or semantic meaning or entailment, right? Because remember, so far I just said that um, these words are used this way by convention, right? So we assume if someone says, but, they probably mean that there's a contrast between two things. So you might wonder, isn't that just the literal meaning of but? Isn't that just what it means? Um, but according to pragmatic theory, the argument is that 
conventional implicatures are still different from literal meaning. And the easiest way that we can tell that is by looking at what happens when we say an utterance in which the conventional implicature is wrong. Right? So if we do that with literal meaning or entailment, it makes the utterance false. Right? So if I say something and its literal meaning is false, then the utterance I made is false. Right? So for example, if I say the background of this slide is red, that's just false. I'm just, I'm lying, right? Because the background of this slide is white. Um, but imagine if I say something which has a conventional implicature, which is false. So if I say, uh, Jeff Bezos is rich, but he can afford that mansion. Right? So because I use the word but there, the implicature usually associated with that would be that being rich and being able to afford a mansion don't usually go together, right? And that, that's false, right? Usually if someone's rich, they probably can't afford a big mansion. So, but that doesn't mean that this sentence is false, right? If I say Jeff Bezos is rich, but he can afford that mansion, it's not a false sentence. It's just a weird sentence, right? It, it's something, it kind of doesn't make sense for me to say that. It's, it's a weird thing to say. So this is one of, I think, the key differences between conventional implicatures and literal meaning is that literal meaning truth conditional meaning, entailment, semantic meaning, whatever we call it, it makes a sentence true or false, right? But conventional implicatures don't make a sentence true or false. They make it kind of, they make it weird or they make it inappropriate or something like that. Um, so again, these are, um, some of these distinctions might seem confusing and abstract. And in fact, many of them are debated. So there are, there are different theories of pragmatics that some of them reject these distinctions, or some of them believe that some of these kinds of things are not implicatures, but they come from somewhere else. But anyway, I think it's very important to understand these distinctions and understand how to tell the difference between them to be able to think about the kinds of phenomena that we will be discussing throughout the rest of this subject.